Here is how to solve and graph an equation. The most important thing you need to know about solving an equation or an inequality is that we use inverse operations. Inverse operations are a fancy, fancy way of saying opposite operations. So if you have a problem that is multiplying, let's say 7x equals 14, that 7 and that x are being multiplied together. In order to solve your equation, you would use the opposite of times 7, which is divided by 7, on both sides of your equal sign to get your solution that x equals 2. If you had a division problem, like j divided by 4 equals 12, you would use the opposite of divided by 4, which is times 4, to do to both sides to get your solution of j equals 48. If you had a problem that involved addition, like p plus negative 3 equals 1, you would do the opposite of addition, but with the caveat, which is like the, oops, careful, of you're not just looking at the plus sign, you're looking at the sign sign of the number. So the opposite here of negative 3 would be positive 3. So p would equal 4. And if we're doing the opposite of subtracting, like x minus 4 equals 3, you could add 4 because this is negative 4. You want to do the opposite of that, which is positive 4. Add 4 to both sides, you get x equals 7. So you have to know your opposite operations, your inverse operations, in order to be able to solve these kinds of problems. I did those all really quickly, so I'm going to go demonstrate in a slower fashion what I mean by solving your equations. All right, here I have p minus 4 equals 10. What you might have seen me doing just now before that was drawing these lines. The reason I do that is because an equation means that both sides are equal. We oftentimes can refer to this as a balance. You might see pictures drawn like this. And by might see, I mean I know you will see these on tests and quizzes where on one side you have a variable and possibly some numbers and on the other side you have numbers 8, 9, 10 I draw these lines here to say, hey, they are equal. And what I do to one side of my equation or one side of my balance, I have to do it to the same, the same thing on the other side. Because if I take off one of these ones on one side of the equation, suddenly the scale is not going to be balanced and it might start tipping and be unbalanced. That is not okay. I need my equation to stay balanced. So those lines are there to help me remember, hey, this is one side of my equation and this is the other side. If I'm doing something to this side, I have to do the same thing to the other side. Now, our goal is to isolate our variable. Isolate, I think of ice and icing someone out, which is kind of a, an old expression, but it means like, freezing them out, not letting them hang out with you, not letting them talk with you. They're kind of isolated or all alone. To isolate your variable, you want to get it by itself on one side of your equal sign. So I want just p. I don't want that negative 4, that minus 4. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that minus 4 and say, hey, how could I get rid of that? If I add 4 to this side of the equation, it's like adding 4 positives right here. When I do the opposite operation, they cancel each other out. A positive and a negative disappear because together they make 0. 
This positive and this negative disappear. This one and this one, bye bye This one and this one, all gone. Suddenly you just have P on the side of your balance. That's great, except if I only add 4 to this side of my equation, it's not going to be balanced. It's going to be a lot heavier and it's going to be unbalanced. So what I have to do is I have to add 4 to both sides. If I suddenly add 4 over here, in addition to adding those 4, they're going to stay balanced because I added the same amount of weight to each side of my scale. So if I have more room, if I have minus 4 plus 4, we saw that that simplifies just P on one side, my equal sign, and then 10 plus 4 is 14. If you don't believe me, you can go back and check. P is 14. Does 14 minus 4 equal 10? 14 minus 4 is 10. Does 10 equal 10? Yes, it does. This is my solution. The answer to an equation is called a solution, and it's very important to know how that looks on a number line. On a number line, you would see 14, 13, 15, 16, 12. When you would graph that, if you have an equal symbol, that means that 14 is your answer. We want a nice shaded in, it's called a closed circle at 14, and that's it. An equation only has one solution, so there should be one dot, nothing else on your number line. Let's try another one. R, 3 plus r is negative 5. All right, here are the two, the two sides of my equation. This side and this side. What I do to one of them, I have to do to the other. And I really, really, really want r to be all by itself. All right, well, right now, r is attached to a 3. Is that a positive 3 or a negative 3? It's positive, so the opposite of that positive 3 is negative 3. If I put a negative 3 in there, those 3 positives and those 3 negatives are going to form 3 0 pairs, plus 1, minus 1, that's 0. Plus 1, minus 1, that's 0. Plus 1, minus 1, that's 0. So I have 0 plus r, which is just r, equals, well, I subtracted 3 on this side. I'm going to have to subtract 3 on this side. When you have negative numbers involved in your problem, I like to draw myself my chart. Are there positive points? No. There are 5 negative points, and then there are 3 more negative points. The negative team is the winner with a total of 8 points. So your answer, called your solution, is that r equals negative 8. On a number line, I would find where negative 8 is and put a nice closed circle at negative 8. Nowhere else. Not at negative 10. Not at positive 1. Nowhere else on the circle, just a closed circle at negative 8. Another one. Ooh, this one is a multiplication problem. I think multiplication problems are sometimes the hardest for people to see and remember that it means multiplication. A plus, an addition problem, would always have a plus sign. You cannot have addition without a plus sign. A subtraction problem will always have a minus sign. You cannot subtract without a minus sign. A division problem could have a fraction bar to represent it, or it could have your traditional division symbol. But either way, there has to be a symbol to represent your division. Multiplication is the only operation I don't actually need a symbol to know that it's happening. Yes, I could have 8 times k. I could also have 8 dot k. I could also have 8 funny star asterisk k. I could also have 8 parentheses k. Those all mean multiplication, but so does this. 8 and k, so close together you cannot fit another symbol in between them, means that you're multiplying them. The opposite of times 8 is divided by 8. 
what I do to one side of my equation, I have to do the same operation, same number to the other side. 8k divided by 8 makes a fancy 1k. 1k, I don't need to write the number 1 as my numeric coefficient. I can just write k. Keep my equal sign. 88 divided by 8 is 11. That is my solution. You can go back and check it by saying 8 times 11. Does that equal 88? Why, yes, it does. All right, then I correctly solved my equation. On a number line, you'd find number 11. You'd put a closed dot at 11. When we graph inequalities, you will see that there are arrows being drawn and different types of circles, open or closed. If you are graphing an equation that is equal to one number and only one number, it's a closed circle at that number. Last type. This is kind of confusing for some people. Most people can recognize that this fraction bar means division. We have c divided by 3. Most people can recognize that the opposite of divided by 3 is times 3. But sometimes people get tripped up on how this actually works out. So c divided by 3 looks like a fraction to me. So when I'm multiplying fractions, I need both numbers to be a fraction. 3 over 1 is the same as 3. 3 times c is 3c. 1 times 3 is 3. 3c divided by 3 is a fancy 1c, which I can just write as c. Now, that's a bit of work. I mean, it's not a ton, but it's more than the other kinds of problems. It does not need to be work that you draw out on the page every time. If you can wrap your brain around the fact that times 3 and divided by 3 cancel each other out to 1c, and the reason we do an inverse operation is so that we can get ourselves down to this 1c, that's great. All I need to see is your times 3 and your times 3, and I'm fine if you then write just plain c. I know what you mean. So this all simplifies to c. 21 times 3, well, 2 times one, 3 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3, c equals 63 is your solution. You can go back and check it by dividing 63 divided by 3, 3 goes into 6 2 times, 3 goes into 3 1 time. Yes, that is true that 21 equals 21. Excellent. 63 on a number line, nice closed circle, no other points, no other arrows, no other lines, nothing else on your number line other than your closed circle at your exact number. The last thing I want to point out is that you can leave your answers in fraction form. Here I have a multiplication problem, 2 times a. The opposite of times 2 is dividing by 2 both sides of my equation. 2 divided by 2 is a fancy 1. a equals 11 divided by 2. 11 and 2 are both prime numbers. I cannot simplify that fraction more. I can just leave it as that. That's a great answer. Done. If it asks you to plot on a number line, if it's an open number line, meaning that you don't have any numbers there and you can write them in, yay, write 11 halves, put a circle at it, done. If it's a number line that already includes numbers on it, I've plotted 1 and 2, oops, that's a 3, and 3 and 4 and on and on and on, then you would actually need to go take your 11 halves and I would recommend turning it into a mixed number with fractions because that is still simpler than finding your solution with a decimal remainder. So 11 halves equals 2 halves plus 2 halves plus 2 halves plus 2 halves plus 2 halves, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, plus 1 half makes 11 halves. This is one, two, three, four, five holes and a half. So you'd find 
five and a half on your number line. Put a nice closed circle there because it is equal to, and that's how you'd plot that one on a number line. So if you get fractions that are not evenly divisible, don't panic. It's totally possible to leave it as fully fraction form or change it to a mixed number or change it to a decimal. All of those are options and you can still plot it on a number line.